say what you're gonna say, say it, and then repeat it. And then right. people come away from the conversation really understanding what you had to say. And you can go into examples, you can say a lot of different things about it, but stick to the same themes. It works for interviews as well. People go in, a, in an interview without mm -hmm. knowing what their key attributes are. If you stick to two or three key attributes about yourself, and everything that you talk about in the interview will be relating to how your stories, your academic background, your challenges are reflective of your two or three key attributes, then the person comes out of the interview and says, okay, and you can start the interview and say, I think I am dependable, hardworking, and consistent. Mm -hmm. And these are my three key attributes. Stay it straight out. And then you keep going back to those themes throughout the interview. Depending on the question, you can just gear, you know, you can move the question to go back into one of those three themes. And then the interviewer comes out really saying, okay, this guy is really, you know, dependable, hardworking, and consistent. Okay, so, so this guy is really uh, oh, yeah. intelligent. So, <laughs> no, is this a natural thing for you? Yeah. I think, with I think political speeches and non-political speeches, it's the same thing. So, it's okay, about, so what advice can you give <laughs> Kitty here? Well, I think Who one... Is going to yeah, I think one be a politician is, I think at the end of the sooner. day, uh, it's about you connecting with every single member of that community. So it's you finding commonalities with them as people, because all people, regardless of background, academic background, uh, social class, etc., there are common things between every individual. And the more commonalities you can demonstrate between you and your constituents, or you and your voter, or you and your peers, then the better friends you'll become, or the, more stro the stronger your relationship will become. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really that. It's really saying, I may look different, I may be different, I may come from a different place, but really you and I may share certain things. So it's exploring that commonality. Uh, and the more you explore that, then the more they like you, and the more actually you like them, and you'll appreciate them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I do it with my students, is that every class you need to build a bridge between you and the student. Mm -hmm. And so you need to find it. With one person, it might be you know, a Sarah Hirani mo movie, and with another, another person, it might be um, hip-hop music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've seen the movie, and I listen to hip-hop music, and maybe I can have a connection with this person on this level and with this person it's a book that I shared mm -hmm. with this person I like dogs he likes dogs so it could be anything and it's the same thing on a broader scale when you're ru running for public office it's saying okay, listen listen you know who who is here who is here in the audience what do you and I have in common and the more you talk about that the more you dwell on that and the more you'll actually appreciate each other learn from each other like each other so there's a course that teaches all of this I don't know if it's really a course. I think it's just human nature. I think people want to be understood, want to be listened to. Yeah, but what, what if somebody wants to be like you and wants to understand and wants to have a vision that you have? I mean, can they, can they take a course that would teach like some training, some coaching? Yeah, we, we do. We have, have personal that. mastery courses. We have self-mastery courses wherein you're actually guided through this process of self-discovery and you say, who am I? What do I want to become? What is my passion? And in the beginning of our programs, before they go into the technical, how to do a business plan, we start with, who do, what do I want to be? And what kind of work schedule do I want? Do I want to wake up early? Do I want to wake up late? Mm -hmm. Do I want to, you know, do I want to work in a big organization, in a small organization? Some people want to work in a company. Some people want to work in a local company, a multinational company, whatever. Other people want to say, I want to do a business on my own. And there's so, no right or wrong. It's okay. It, it has a lot to do with life coaching. It has a lot to do with life coaching, um, personal mastery. It's really helping people to find the answers for themselves. I've always believed, and the school's philosophy is that you don't teach. I mean, these aren't empty vessels waiting to be filled. They're mm -hmm. not, you know... I have all the knowledge and brilliance and you just sit there and absorb it. It's not like that. You actually think that the person that you're teaching, even if they're 15 or 16 or 17, mm -hmm. already has something that you don't have. They have a genius that you don't have. So it's a learning process. It's symbiotic. Is there something that you can take like um, on the weekend, like if you're only available Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you have, you have something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, we do have weekend classes. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, definitely come to our website, send us an email. Check out our, our yeah. you know, call our visit numbers. your website, but I also want to visit, like, be there and see. No, you have to yeah. see school. Yeah, I know. It's, it's really, yeah, it's really interesting. It's, it's really, really nice. interesting. And, and the vibe is different. Yeah. You, step, you step into the work, our school environment, and then you realize, even without talking to anybody, that it's different. And we're not better or worse, but we're 100% different. Mm -hmm. And it only takes two minutes there to realize that. Just the way it looks, the way people talk to each other, the way people are dressed. Well, after talking to you, I've realized yeah. that already. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Really? So are you taken? So 
I have like many friends who would like to be with somebody like you. Um, <laughs> okay, let's have nothing to do with that question. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taken. Just I'm not so taken. You know. You're not yeah. taken. No, only because I know the answer to that. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. That's why. I mean, I don't know I'm the answer, asking. so mm -hmm. I'm, I ask, right? Mm -hmm. But like, how do you find time to get into everything that you're? I mean, do you go to the karaoke thing and check it out? What's yeah, the stuff? You know, I think, I think. Well, one, I have really good people. I, I, I work with people that are smarter and better than me. So mm -hmm. then they're very dependable and they're, I learn so much from the people I work with. So that's, that's one, is being able to delegate properly. And they also give me work, so we kind of give each other work. And then two, I really like what I do. I mean, everything I do, I really yeah, enjoy. I'm so happy that you're into something you really like to do. So am I. Yes, yeah, so hey, these are pictures from the one school. Oh. Are these your students? No, those are my business partners, actually. Oh, your business partners? Uh, from Team Manila and Quark <laughs> and Aris on the left side. So we had a little photo shoot and had a lot of fun with that. Quark's there, yeah. second to the right in that photo. Hi. <laughs> he has his game face on. He looks yeah. different. He has his game face he on. He needs a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so that, okay, you are five? We're five, yeah, and that are part of this new program, which is the film and intermedia school called SHIFT, School of Intermedia Film and Technology. So it's the first film school here. No, there are many other I mean, very Bigfoot good. Bigfoot and, and There's Bigfoot, there's, there's, there, there's CSB, here. there's UP. Really? Yeah, there, there are many good film schools. Mm -hmm. And again, we're not here to say we're the best, we're yes, the yes, only yes. one, but we're saying that we're different. It's very avant-garde, very renegade, very non-traditional. So that's what we offer. And some people would want to get a more traditional education. Yeah. They should go to a more traditional school. That's right. not, we have okay. no issues with that. Um, I the reason Palau was ragging on Quark is because he was supposed to be here. Yeah, I know Quark. Yeah, Quark. You owe us. You owe us. Like okay. Time. No, movie. And you, as you were going to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I'm sure um, our viewers would like to know about the tuition fee. Yes. A uh, very competitive tuition fee. So pretty in, in much. In the area, in the Makati area. Yeah. It's, okay. it's pretty much, I mean, our tuition fee is pretty much the same as all of the major schools. Mm -hmm. So we're not any higher in terms of our tuition fee okay. than anybody else. So what time are you open? 8 o'clock in the morning till Until? about 7 o'clock in the evening. So you can take like late night class? Yeah, I mean, well, late no, sometimes classes. we have classes from 6 to 9. We really adjust to the teachers and to the students. Mm -hmm. um, we try to find teachers and students that kind of get along and then we make sure that everybody adjusts to that. Okay, so from the five faces we saw, what if um, this viewer is saying, I want that guy, I want Lex to be my teacher. Yeah. They can choose. Yeah. And you have many we all. I mean, we're all teaching. So all of term. you there are teaching. Yeah, we're things. all teaching. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. what yeah, about every once in a while, like Lex gets the professionals from whatever yeah. field to come yes. and give talks. Exactly. Yeah. Give talks on different fields and Basically, we Maybe want we can give a talk. Yeah, for or sure. What kind of field? Anything. <laughs> yeah, anything you want to um, talk about. Because what we're trying to do is get the students to realize that success has no formula. Is that when people come and they're successful from different places, they actually are all different also. And so we want the students to realize that success is basically a person working hard at their passion. And it takes both things because you have to know what you want and then you have to work your butt off to get it. And that's what we're trying to get people to understand. It. There's not, there's nothing is free in the world. Mm -hmm. You can't just wake up and say, I want that, I want that, and sleep all day. And we always say, you know, if you want to be a bum, that's easy. You can do that anytime. Yeah. But we want to be a school where we're making people accountable for what they say they're going to do and making them stand for what they say they're going to do and giving them the tools to do that. So it's, a lot of it is effort-based grading. I mean, it's really mm -hmm. getting people to commit to something and then do it. And if they don't do it, then they should fail. They, they, okay. it's not, you're not helping them. Do you have, you know, do you have uh, like open houses for parents yeah. where you can talk about, you know, like, you know what, you know what I'm really afraid of? Um, pushing your children and making them do something they don't want to do. True. And at the end, they get depressed or they're not, they're not good. And then some people and, so, you know, there are some people who really end their lives. Yeah. See, so um, do you have any open houses for parents where you yeah. can talk to them and you know maybe encourage them because they're the ones going to choose for their children? Yeah, I mean, I think that parents will, parents are welcome to sit in classes anytime as well. Parents are welcome to come over and check out what we're doing. I think though that it's important for the student or the child, regardless of age, to make the choice for themselves mm -hmm. on whatever it is they want to do. But 
when they made that choice, make them accountable for it and actually make them work at it. Yeah. Because if they choose 10 things and they're always changing their mind, it's not always a good thing. But if they're not doing anything, it's also not a good thing. So, so it's good to find a balance. Be, make them part of that process and then make them accountable for it. So what if they choose 10 things and then they just change and change and then, you know? what? I think that if they're, if they're engaged in that decision, so even time frames, like say, okay, I want to learn, I want to become good in soccer or violin. And the child says, how long will you devote to that? And they get him to give an answer. Mm -hmm. And he'll say, okay, I'm going to do this for six months and really try to see if violin is for me. So he and you, the parent and the child, make a decision together that there's a committed fixed time frame. Mm -hmm. And then if that doesn't happen, then what happens next? So even before, it's like you have, a, it's like a contract in essence. But, but can you like, um, I'm giving myself, let's say three months, but after one month, I already know that this is not for me. So can you shift and just I, carry I, it over? I think there's no hard and fast rule to anything. Mm -hmm. But the whole concept behind it is that the supposed superior and the supposed subordinate make a decision as equals and each one is accountable for something. Because that's basically how a contract works anyway. It's two people from equal footing saying, what do you want, what do I want, how do we compromise and meet in the middle? And then you're each accountable for whatever you say you're going to mm -hmm. do. So if they're engaged in that process, and sometimes the two business partners will say, let's just void this contract and not work together. And that's okay too. Mm -hmm. But then it's made with the proper, you know, it's done in the proper way. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's how we should do it. So one thing I like about my co-host is she tries everything. Like she oh, will. Uh, that, that's why I was there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. See, I'm not surprised. I, I mean, she will anywhere. try any, I'm like, so how did you get it? Oh, I just picked up this brochure. Oh, I just picked up this flyer. And I'm like, okay. And she just does everything from surfing to tap dancing to... What I want to ask Lex is why are you guys very business minded? I mean, all the kids. Is it the influence of your mom or your dad? I think or? both. Both my mom and my dad. But I think a lot of it also was that we weren't given a lot of money. I think that that had a lot to do with it. Okay. Is that, and you're, you not, you're not, you're not exactly... Money? Poor, I know. Yeah, it was it Are was a choice. A huge yeah, that, that's why it was a that's, choice. I think that's good. But we They're, weren't given cash. Given, but did we weren't given cash. Feel like, wait a minute, how come we live here and we don't have cash? Yeah, I was studying and I went to grade school in IS, and you know there are a lot of privileged kids there, and so I always had like one tenth of the budget or allowance <laughs> yeah. that my classmate had. Yeah, it wasn't your parents. It wasn't like we it drove. It wasn't like we were driven to school in a car that was lesser, but we just didn't have access yeah. to money. And then and every any time, reason? Like every now that you ask your well, they didn't want us to it. become spoiled. I think that that's would, it. Would you do that if you had? I children? think so. And the thing is, before we would get our allowances, we need to we needed to account everything. I mean, the small allowance that was given, you needed to account it <laughs> before you, you got. Like you had 10, to account I, like I, where the I, money I, went. I spent ten pesos for this. Yes, I, I bought this. Five pesos I bought, for this and yes. twenty pesos All for that. All of you? Yeah, and then yeah, we, yeah, no accounting, no reimbursement. No accounting, no, no reimbursement. Yeah. So do you like invent? Oh, no. Yeah, sometimes you do, or you just do miscellaneous stuff. But it just, no, but it's just a habit. It's, it's training. You're training. Yes. And the oh. fact that we grew up without money. I mean, really, we were not. We did not have access to cash. Like, what if you Good. wanted like a new pair of shoes? Then what? you would save up your allowance for it. See, we had to do that. But when it got to like my brother's kids, they'd be like handed a thousand bucks and all that. I'm like, wait a just minute. Just wait till your kids are born. Okay. Next year. No, but good for your parents. I'm glad they did that. Good training so it for kind you. Of forced so you're not us. spoiled. No, it not kind of forced. Yeah, it kind of forces. It forces you to make to stretch things out, and and even till now, like when I want to buy something that I don't need and I don't have the budget for it, then I'll wait two months sometimes, and I'll save up, and then I'll buy myself a nice iPod or whatever. Mm -hmm. I won't. I mean, I can always like credit card it and say I'll just pay it, whatever. Yes. But I'll say I don't have that money for my iPod. I really want the best model. I'll wait two months, maybe two and a half months, put the money aside, and then I'll buy it. So it's 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 training, right? You're used to it. You're, it's delayed gratification. Yeah. Even the sisters, you know, like the sister throws a party. The way she sets up the place, fantastic. And then recently, his mom had a birthday party at, in Barakay. One sister brought all these. What did you have to bring? <laughs> yeah, these little, the, the shad, like these little chandelier looking glass things. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So mad. You had to bring I had it. to carry it. Yeah. <laughs> it was so heavy. But the way they set up a place or the theme parties that Cheese would throw, like a yeah. cowboy party. And it's really? Just, they're just very creative. The whole yeah. family is and so And it's like creative. you're so passionate about life. I love it. Yeah. Well, I'm happy with what I'm doing. I mean, 
I, I wouldn't do anything just for the money. That's, mm -hmm. that's my personality. I have to love it, and I really believe if you love it, then the money will somehow find its way to you. Because you just do it, and then every day you're really excited. Like, I love food, and now I have a restaurant. So it's so, I'm lucky. Yeah, oh, we, 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 love, we, love, we love food too. We love I love food. Whistle Stop. I, oh. I was the biggest fan. I would eat the high So open 24 7. Oh, high seven. chicken. That's high my high chicken. We had the it's really good. morning I heavyweight know, corned really. beef, which is this corned beef hash. Yeah, yeah, it's like a hash brown with corned beef. It's yeah. really good and too. And they're quaffa. Everything. Yeah. There's just a lot oh, of things. Come on, tell the people where they can find Whistle Stop. Uh, 28 Jupiter Street, beside Fiamma and Starbucks. Fiamma and Starbucks. Yeah, in Starbucks. between. Yeah. Right okay. in between. So you already have the captured crowd. Like yeah, 24 7. Fiamma. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. congratulations. We must I'm go so there. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, check it out. To Whistle check Stop and to the school. To the school. And to Big Chill. Yes. And to Nami yeah. and Nami, Nami, I've eaten the Nami. Yes, 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 and, and fantastic uh, view from oh, there as well. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. And the, the elevators in Nami. Who thought of that? Um, well, it was basically it. When we began, we were so far from everybody, and it was a big disadvantage. But now that everybody wants to stay in a place that's not as crowded, it's become an advantage. And so we put that elevator. At first, to bring all the construction materials up, and then we said, "Why don't we just leave it so we can?" Yeah, oh, we it's can such a good it. idea. Yeah. And you know, when you're sitting there sipping your coffee, I mean, I don't drink coffee, but you know, mm -hmm. I was sipping whatever, and it's like you're in a different country. I mean, of yeah. course, I love the Philippines; it's beautiful, mm -hmm. but it's like you were you were in a different place. Mm -hmm. It's very serene. Yeah. 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 And the rooms upstairs, so you have your own like like jacuzzi, jacuzzi in the room, in the room, right? Yeah. So. Pretty cool. Okay, how nice that I've been there. Yes. It's very nice to meet you. I think I've seen you in Square Off. I maybe. think maybe that's where I saw maybe. you. I was thinking, his face. I kept looking. Maybe. Yeah, we'd like to thank Lex Ledesma for the really enlightening interview. Yeah, thank, thank you very you much. Too. Thank I mean, it, it makes uh, me want to go back to school. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. 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 And yeah. for all the parents out there, I hope you learned a little thing about your kids because yes. it's never wise to force them into whatever mm -hmm. course that you would have wanted to take yourself because I know a lot of people they want to they take, they tell the children take down the street and they finish it they graduate but, yeah, but, but then, now they're not even using it exactly. so